The first time I bumped him, it, into him in the hall, I said, good morning, Mr. Dillon. Call me Walt, he said. And then he went on. And um, I think I, I think we were, uh, you know, he knew me and I knew him and, and I could always go see him if I wanted to. He was very accessible. I think we were uh, very accessible friends. And I ruined that whole thing by going on strike against him. I've resented that or react, I mean, uh, uh, not resented that, I mean, I've been sorry about that ever since. It wasn't, it not going out on strike, I heard that we hurt Walt, Walt Disney's feelings. That needn't have been. All he had to have done is to tell us, ask for our help to do the pictures as best as, as we could to help him because he was in, in dire financial straits. But never said that. He, um, instead, he took a very um, aggressive, angry attitude at us, so we went out on strike. We were just kids, mind you, and we would take no nonsense from anybody. What specific actions precipitated the strike? Well, um, I was not a, a union member, so I wasn't a member of, of the guild that, that declared strike. But what caused the strike was the dire financial circumstance of the studio and the fact that the girls were paid very uh, minimal minimal wages and um, and there were other little things that were that were being done that, that were upsetting to us we had to declare that we worked uh, only 40 hours when we were doing really 48 hours a week and that one but that wasn't what cost it there was the spirit of the studio had gone out when he um, gave up the Hyperion studio and moved to, to the valley. Now we move to the valley where things are very opulent. Beautiful new desks, beautiful new building. We couldn't put push pins into the walls. A lot of things like that. And we resented that. That was not our cartoon studio. A cartoon studio was a studio of, of cartoonists and artists and kind of uh, freewheeling you know, personality. The union leader was a, a, a fellow, uh, an animator by the name of Art Babbitt. And um, I should say that uh, I be, after the strike, I became very good friends with Art. Art Babbitt was his name. But he was the only senior animator, the only really, you know, uh, guy who was on the upper echelon of, 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 of the studio ranks, of the talent in the studio the one who started all these art classes, he did a lot of good for Disney and with Disney. And um, apparently when the strike developed, he's the only senior animator that was asked for help from all the rabble that was the, the, the striker that, the, the, that went out with us, with one other exception, a Russian by the name of Bill Teitler. These two heroes gave up their careers, they're, they were the, high, the highest paid in, in the studio. They gave everything to help a bunch of rabble. And I like to say that I really appreciate it. And I always was their friend until they died. And I admired them and always uh, respected and gave them a lot of credit for the, de the little decency that I found in, in, the stu in, the, in, the, in the general run-of-the-mill, run uh, you know, studio in Hollywood. Uh, the day before the strike, I heard that they had voted for a strike. And I told my friends, I said, they don't dare put a picket line out there. I'm going to drive through them. I'm going to smash them. Don't forget, uh, I was from a military family in Mexico, and, and they don't know what conservatism is in this country unless you're the, the son of a Mexican general. By golly, talk about conservatives. Gee. For example, when my grandmother heard that I was a, a union member, she couldn't believe it. My son, said she, are you a communist? Anyhow, that's another story. So anyhow, so here we're out on strike now, see? And of course, we behaved like, like lunatics. We're a young kid, don't forget. And we were having a good time. and. And those inside uh, were not having such a good time because we were so vocal and outside there, you know, walking back and forth and yelling at them. <laughs> what, what if the girls really stopped me cold? 
I was going around, you know, real happy. And this girl comes out, very pretty girl, and she says, what? and she wasn't a striker, although we'd gone out on strike for her. See? And she said, what is it you guys really want? He said, money? He said, a fish full of pennies, and he threw them at us. I said, Jesus, if Walt had offered us that, we'd still be in there with you. <laughs> but anyhow, that was the kind of a strike it was at the beginning. See, it was very, uh, yeah, very cheerful and noisy. And, um, but then Walt, going in and out, started snarling at us for some reason. And, and, and insulting Art Babbitt, our leader, who'd be out there, you know, in, on, on a mic, exhorting us to, to more action. <laughs> and so, uh, ooh, Walt took that really to heart. So from then on, every time Walt went through the line, we made life miserable for him, you know. We would holler at him and, and, I, and, he, and he saw us, see, they took pictures of all of us. And whereas I had considered myself a good friend of Walt before, I could see that he, took a dislike to me when he saw me, you know, jumping around, and, and I don't blame him. The difference was this. Later on, when I met other producers, for example, Leon Schlesinger, we struck him. And you know what? We had a lot of fun and, and, and cusses at each other, but as soon as the strike was over, we became friends again. Not with Walt. He took it to heart, so I knew we had hurt his feelings. How dare we go out on strike against him? And so, the strike lasted for like about three months. And Walt, of course, was in no uh, spirit or friendliness or anything to make, you know, make up with us. He just wanted to crush us. His brother, though, Roy Disney, is a different kind of a man. And so I don't know how he did it, but somehow he got Walt out of the country. Like he encouraged Walt to go down to South America and do saludos amigos and do, you know, a lot of research. While he was gone, Roy settled the strike. He says, guys, come back and forget all this nonsense. And so we did. Well, Walt was gone, see. He must have been furious when he came back, but I still was friendly to him. I said, morning, Walt. I didn't say Mr. Disney anymore. <laughs> snarled a few words and keep on going, which was part of the fun. We're cartoonists, you know, that was great. I tell you, out of that cartoon strike, uh, I wish I could, everybody was drawing great big cartoons. And even, even they, they took a lot of, you know, uh, film of, of that strike, because he was a curious strike. There had never been a strike like that in Hollywood. But I think Walt, again, with his personality and his uh, backing of being such a hero, the, the average uh, person in the street and the populace, the, how could you strike Walt? My gosh, he's a saint, a hero that makes all these beautiful things for our children. It was easy, so we just went out on strike. But uh, that changed the whole... Uh, uh, spirit, I think, of, of animation. Uh, in the rest of the studio, the rest of the industry, they didn't care. In fact, they supported the strike. They used to come out there, and even in little planes, and, you know, encourage us. And, and they used to, you know, at noon come out on the picket line with us, or have lunch with us, because on the knob, you know where the hospital is? We used to call it the knob. That's where our strike camp was. We had a whole bunch of tents, and we had a, a kitchen, and the uh, what do you call it? A, a union of, of chefs or something. They're a union, they sent a, a cook up there to cook our meals. <laughs> Wasn't that great? It was fun. So um, uh, we picked up the, the camp and, and then went back to work. And that's when we finally, I finally realized that Walt was in bad financial straits. Because um, it wasn't long before there was a big layoff. And so, and now this is, it was just before the war started. And I think he had already picked up, I'm not sure, but that I'm just, my conjecture is he already had picked up some work from the government to do, a, you know, a educational film for the services. But I don't know. The thing was that um, uh, I was laid off with a lot of other people. And that's when I found out that the outside industry was pretty good too. <laughs> 